Ik zou hier een elf van meel nemen. Coming up in SG now, City Joe Abbey meets a man over a really expensive fish. We find out which animals Singaporeans most dream of being in 1 by 30. City Joe cousin goes undercover to experience some of the difficulties faced by staff at a cafe run by ex-offenders. And Avengers Assemble! City Joe Damik meets Singapore's most famous comic book collector. Hello everyone, welcome to SG Now. We start the episode with a story about a man who loves fish. Not the kind you have with the chips, but the kind that is considered both a good luck charm and a work of art by serious collectors. The Asian arowana fish is the most expensive aquarium fish in the world. This large freshwater fish dates all the way back to the time of the dinosaurs. Due to its undulating style of swimming, its metallic scales resembling coins and the whiskers on its chin, the arowana has been compared to paper dragons you see during Chinese New Year. This has led to the belief that the fish is good luck and will bring prosperity to the owner, which is why it has become popular with wealthy collectors all over the world. City Joe Abbey got close up and personal with one of these remarkable fish where she paid a visit to Mr. Yap Chi Kyung, better known as the Arowana King. Hello, hello! Here's a little quiz before we begin. How much do you think this Arowana fish costs? Is it A. $1,800 B. $18,000 or C. $180,000 you probably guessed it but didn't dare to confirm it. Yes, it is valued at C, $180,000. And that's not even the most expensive arowana that this shop has sold. <laughs> you know how when you think of certain things, different names will come to mind like you think of fast food straight away you think of mcdonald's kfc and then you think of sweet drinks you think of coca-cola well if you think of arowana fish you definitely think of mr yap chi kyung that's because mr yap founder of blue crystal aquarium has been in this line for over 20 years winning multiple awards worldwide and is even an international judge for arowana competitions Mr. Yap's love for fishes started when he was still a little boy living in a kampong. We uh, <laughs> but it hasn't always been a bed of roses for Mr. Yap. He invested all his life savings into arowana and a power outage caused all his fishes to die. 停电后, 那个水, 那个自来水的水管破裂, 
，造成我的所有的趋势啊，跟那个期望啊，呃，我不会讲啊，就是全部死到光了，就死了这么多人，那都那个太我太太哭了几个小时啊，啊，那个时候我真的很伤心，我不懂怎么讲。过了一个星期、两个星期就收拾好心情，我、呃、我的姐姐讲啊，不然你再继续做啦。我再接到你一笔钱呢、啊，最后这笔钱，他也像剩下啊，大约剩下四五万了，就是全部接够啊。反正我把我的屋屋子卖掉，剩的屋子卖掉，我就跑去跟人家租房子，就是这样。他跟我说，你屋子卖了，所有的储蓄就是拿来拼，就是你后面没有路了，你就要向前走。所以我就从那个时候开始，就就一直向前走了。Having braved through that major storm, Mr. Ya never looked back. 就算现在遇到所有的问题，我就讲，哎呀，什么大风大浪我都经过了，这个是小儿科了哈。所以说，一直坚持，我遇到困难，我就会拿这个东西来警惕自己。He now has business clients all over the world, including Philippines, China, Thailand, and Canada, and trading and bidding projects in places like Indonesia. As Mr. Yap puts it, arowana is not just fish; it is also a form of art that has a special place in his heart. This is my spiritual guide, also my self-care method. I can say so. I love it. I love it. It has fed my family, so I am also very happy. It's been a very humbling experience listening to Mr. Yap. How he started from a kampung boy, along the way lost all his savings, but he persevered and became who he is today. And it's even more interesting that fish to fish lovers is not just fish, but it is an art form, and it really goes to show that as long as you're passionate about something, everything is a form of art. <laughs> wow! What a big fish! <laughs> exactly. Big fish means big money. Mm. <laughs> Clearly, Mr. Yap is not just in this for the money. He really loves the fish in his care. I completely agree, and it is so interesting to think that this fish represents a uniquely modern concept: yes. the mass-produced endangered species. At a time when wild populations are all but depleted, the number of arowana farms is at an all-time high. Conservationists apparently have mixed feelings about this, but if all the fish are tended to with as much love as Mr. Yap's, then it can only be a positive move for the longevity of the arowana species. Yes, Gladys. Our next story revolves around fish too, kind of, and other animals too. We post a simple question to Singaporeans on the street: If you could be any animal, what animal would you be? I think horse because it runs very fast. I'd like to be a monkey. Why? Because they're fun, they're clever, and they just like enjoy life. The rabbit, um, because that's my Chinese zodiac. I would like to be a cheetah because I'm just so taken in by their brute strength. A giraffe. I think for me a tiger. I think because it's at the top of the food chain, uh, apex predator. So something strong and scary. Uh, probably be an eagle, because I would like to like soar through the air. Then I'll be the lion. Because I'll be an alpha male. Yeah. Mm. I would like to be a unicorn. It is very pretty, and I want to be pretty. Fish. Because it's just like swim, eat, sleep, and then just like nothing to do. <laughs> to be a bear, like, because why? Bear always rest, you know. Uh, so when he move, also move fast. But he rest, he really totally rest. I would like to be a cheetah because cheetahs are fast and majestic. So I think horse looks very good and uh, it's very strong and healthy. I would want to be a panda because they just sleep and eat all day. A sloth because they get to sleep the whole day. 
I would like a honey to be a honey badger simply because the fact that it's very tough. When say a group of lions attacks it or something, it doesn't just like go down without a fight. I would be a bald eagle. Why? Because you, you live in the mountains, you fly high, free away from humans. The first thing that came to mind is either a pet cat or panda actually. They do their own shit. They do their own shit. They don't care. They, they chill, they eat, they sleep. That's all I want to do, honestly. My friends would say that I, like my personality is like a wolf. I think it's also because my dog looks like a wolf. I like to be an eagle. Cause eagle can fly up in the sky and look for prey. I would love to be a sheep, gentle and tame, but uh, also blur and you know, blindly being led by others. I think that's the true, purest side of the sheep. You mean the stupidity? Uh? Yeah, sometimes you get the best life. <laughs> Maybe a uh, rich owner's cats or dog. Because, yeah, I can just sleep and eat all day. I think I like to be a bird so that I can be carefree and fly to wherever I want to go. Okay, and but... And I can just shit on anybody's head I want. <laughs> I want to be a pig. I can eat and sleep all day. Would you like to see more pigs in Singapore? I think have. But they... <laughs> <laughs> so, so the pig become pop? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to be a rhino. Because like, in Singapore, there are less population in white rhinos. So I want to make like more. I'd like to be a pigeon because pigeons mean peace. I mean, I want world peace. Hmm, if you could be any animal, Nick, what animal would you be and why? Hmm, Gladys, I want to be a Greenland shark so that I can swim in the ocean. And shark is one of the longest living animals in the world. <laughs> Around 200 over years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you want to be a shark because you want to live a, live a very, very long life. Yes, and you can <laughs> swim in the ocean. So cool, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. How about you, Gladys? Hmm, <laughs> can't you tell? I want to be a kitty cat. Kitty cat? You look like one today. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, <laughs> but did you believe me? Yes. I was kidding. Because girls like kitty cats. Not all girls, okay. but I would want to be a horse. A horse? Because Why? I want to roam wild and free in a very large patch of grass or the green fields under the hot sun. Man, run very fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Our next story takes us to People's Park Centre, where if you're feeling hungry and want to support a good cause at the same time, you can check out the Breakthrough Cafe. That's right. According to their Facebook page, Breakthrough Cafe aims to assist and prepare ex-drug addicts for reintegration into the community by providing them with employment opportunities and by empowering them to be effective in both their life and at work, bringing greater contributions to their family and society. To find out how they do this, CDJ Cousin went undercover as a waiter for the day. It's a challenge for me know to communicate with customer. I am with Sam Lim, the manager of Breakthrough Cafe, a cafe that serves excellent food and totally run by ex-offenders trying to reintegrate with society by being gamefully employed. Today I will experience what it feels like to serve customers with my arms fully tattooed. It's my first day at Breakthrough Cafe. I'm going to be employed for one day. Uh, not sure what to expect, um, but uh, let's hope for the best. I've never worked in f &B in my life, and uh, I hope to get some acceptance. I'm the manager of Breakthrough Cafe. Yeah, I'm Sam Lim. I'm a full-time uh, missionary staff at Breakthrough Mission. Uh, my age is now 52. A family with two children, and I uh, my background is a uh, hardcore drug addict. I was attached to Breakthrough Mission after the, my sentence. So from there, the man management uh, and, uh, attached me to Breakthrough Cafe here. Okay, uh, so Sam, uh, you said you were a hardcore drug addict. Can I ask uh, what turned your life around? God changed my life. I'm great to say that because uh, in the past I used to you know, hang around night, uh, rocking my feet at night. So um, 
I didn't know what is freedom, what is peace, what is joy, until the day I met God. During the first day here, I was quite nervous, and um, it's a challenge for me, you know, to communicate with customer. We don't really, you know, talk to people. Even if we talk, people might not understand us. We are all in Chinese. 所以唯一的挑战在这里，就是当我们跟顾客讲话的时候，会在意他们对我们的眼光。This is how I feel. I experienced some communication challenges myself. Some customers spoke in dialect, which I have limited understanding for. My greatest challenge was trying to understand the body language of people who did not talk. In some ways. I preferred to do the task that needed no conversation, like wiping and clearing tables, putting food from tray to table. My favorite part was taking pictures. At least it looked as if the customers were smiling at me. I got a mission. Is I want to tell people how my life was changed. 那么是什么人来改变我？所以这个是我的，我最大的希，我的最大的盼望跟我的梦想，我要让人家知道，啊，什么东西可以改变生命？像我这样的人，透过什么管道，我可以被塑造、被改变？在这里，不单只是我工作的场所，而是每个人都可以来找我。经过什么管道来认识上帝，然后被塑造，生命被改变。Communication is not so easy. Yes, I need. I guess I have to communicate in the way that they understand. All right, and then yes. otherwise they won't give me their attention. Anyway, you are very good. Thank you. Seven thank you. thumbs up. Okay, you are very fast learner. Breakthrough Cafe is very happy to have customers support their mission. Their staff, like Sam, have gone through life-changing transformations to set a new direction in life. I experienced firsthand what it felt like to look and behave differently from customers, but I am happy when the cafe is full. Having a meal with friends and family at Breakthrough Cafe is more than just good food. It helps to change lives. Just remember, when communication is a challenge, a big smile can do wonders. I'm Seti Jo Carson, Singapore One. Wow, Breakthrough Cafe looks like it's doing really well. That surely speaks to the success of the mission and the quality of the food. I'm definitely going to drop by the next time when I'm in the area. Count me in on that one too. Cool. Moving on. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Captain Comic. Not Superman. <laughs> <laughs> If you got no idea what we're talking about, don't worry. Here's our very own signature adventure, Super Dummy, with the story of the mysterious Singaporean superhero, Captain Comics. Hey guys, like most guys my age, I love superheroes from the Flash, Nightcrawler, and even the Emissary from Hell. Spider-Man, but did you know that Singapore has its very own superhero? His name is Captain Comics, and I found his secret base. Let's go. Hi, I'm Vincent, and I'm also known as Captain Comics to friends and uh, buyers of my services uh, locally as well as uh, anywhere where there's a, a co co community to uh, enjoy comic books. Uh, I've been collecting comics since I was. Secondary one, and that will be almost fifty years, and still going strong. So uh, there was a period in my life when my mother was telling me, "Go and sell your comics because you are hoarding." <laughs> But it got to me, you know. He said, "Go and sell comics." So I literally did that, did that, and said, "Go and sell comics." <laughs> so the opportunity came.、Uh, Uh, when I decided to be serious, I was、uh, putting comics in batches of twenty-five to thirty.、Uh, in、uh, in this, the first one was eighteen shares. 
Now that we know the origin story of Captain Comics, let's learn about his driving passion. Passion comes, works well if you have a plan and a direction. Because passion can kill you if you do not have that. So for me, passion comes in at the onset when I see that there is, um, there is still a, there's a gap that I can fill. I don't want to sell a product that uh, they can write on Facebook or on social media. Don't buy from this guy called Captain Comics, you know. That's why if you go to the review section, I'm proud of it because those are what people write about. If this comic is uh, described as the early start of Fantastic Four, for example, and if they add in a vinyl record as a set in a comic book shop, this would be a rare find. So, so that means in this, in this set, it is collectible because of the product and the compilation of the first stories, right? So this is considered a collectible for a hardcore uh, comic fan. Whereas in this range, it is still Fantastic Four, but it has a serial number of number one, and it says here 19? 1963. 1963. So this was issued on the newsstand at 1963, which is definitely not in Singapore because it, it never came. So this, this was hard to get in terms of the number. And then number 92. Hey, sorry, number two? 1964. And so on. Oh wow, one a year. So what, what you're seeing right now on the screen is these are annuals. Annuals are different from from uh, from single story books because this will run every month, but this comes out once a year. So what it means is that they will compile original stories and sometimes uh, reprints. But in this in this concoction of uh, packaging as a comic, it is still collectible because the story of Doctor Doom, for example, may come across as an origin story. It was fun learning of Vincent's love for comics and heartwarming to see how he innovates to share his passion with others. I myself might just get my hands on a copy of the original Moon Knight issue 1. With that said, this has been City Joe Darmic for Singapore One. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> Such a huge collection of comics in Vincent's store. I bet some of them are worth a lot of money. I bet you're completely right. <laughs> <laughs> so Gladys, do you read comic books as well? I do, I do. Uh -huh. But funny enough, I haven't read many English-based comic books. Right. I've read a lot of Japanese ones, Korean ones, even Chinese ones. Oh, so which is your favourite? Well, I cannot pick. I, I love reading them. But I'm not so much of a collector. And I think it's the same for a lot of people in the community as well. Right. A lot of people like to read and a lot of them like to buy the books to support the author. Uh -huh. But not so many might actually collect True. unless they're a fan of the entire series. Ah, what my, about you? My favourite is Lao Fu Zi. Old wow, Master. <laughs> that is a really old classic. <laughs> yes, and also Superman, Superhero, Spider-Man, <laughs> you know, Batman. <laughs> but are you a collector or are you just no, a fan of reading? I don't collect. Yeah. That's the thing, right? I think that collecting is such a niche thing. It's sort of like a sport, right? You really have to actively go into it. Yes. And for Vincent, he has been collecting since secondary one. So that's wow. really amazing. He's clearly mm -hmm. very passionate. Mm -hmm. I imagine some of his favourites are not for sale. Yes. And Gladys, if you want to find out more, we've included a link to the Captain's Comic Facebook page in the program description. So you can check it out. That's right. And that is it for our show today. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, like, comment, share and subscribe. Yes, thank you so much and see you next time. Bye. Bye. Superman. <laughs>